Okay, our first real big preseason target taken out, along with the first huge blind side, if you ask me. Oh yeah, sure, you can argue that, um, Natalie, Danny, and, um, uh, Ethan ha were blindsided, but, um, it doesn't carry the right vibe for a blindside bit, cause, like, um, in the, um, uh, Immediate post-HVV era, which is, um, Nicaragua through, um, Worlds Apart, though I need to retitle that era of Survivor to something else now, um, uh, you know, this would be the kind of episode you'd have the hashtag blindside and the <laughs> thing in the background if they were to still do that. I don't think they do that any more, which I'm both, um, Glad about, and at the same time, not so glad about, because I do love that, um, tune, but the hashtags, you know, they were, um, overkill, especially since when they started doing them, I had no clue what a hashtag was. Well, it's because I wasn't on Twitter then, now I am. And, um... Uh, it becomes predictable, you know, like with the challenge music, so I think they're trying to, um, change that up recently, because in last episode, when the, um, puzzle thing was coming down to the wire, yeah, the music got more intense, but they didn't have any cue as to which tribe was going to, um, win, whereas that Island of Idols challenge, I think it was the, um, Sixth episode that totally had um, that musical cue, so I'm glad they're ditching that kind of stuff. Oh, geez, two minutes in, I haven't even gone to the actual episode yet. <laughs> so we get some more um, drama on the edge where um, everybody, you know, had to do that huge walk backward and forward, then even, I guess, gets super dehydrated and crumbles, and I was really nervous for that guy, because I figured it was just dehydration, but, um, how far is too far, but based on how the, uh, doctor was able to, um, have a fairly good back and forth conversation with Ethan, I got the idea that actually, if he just stays where he is, at least for a while, he shouldn't be in danger of being pulled from the game, and thank god he wasn't. And it's really interesting to see how so far everyone's been bonding on, um, the edge. I thought there would totally be some tension, especially with Natalie and, um, Amber going off and trying to best everybody. But, um, I guess there's a little more camaraderie than, um... We're thinking, we'll have to see if um, that lasts, because now there's more than four people on the edge, so now it's impossible to keep track of, um, everyone. Hmm, that's gonna be real interesting. Although, granted, given how that island is designed, maybe it's not as big of a deal as I'm thinking, because of that tough terrain. Hmm, oh, whatever. Okay, so the, uh, it was interesting how this episode, um, flipped, uh, in terms of, um, camera time devoted to each tribe, because here you had the blue tribe, uh, a little more, little more superfluous, and you had a lot more strategy on the red tribe, but then you had the challenge, and I wasn't expecting blue to bounce back, but thankfully they did, so... Yeah, as it turns out, I do support the blue tribe in pretty much every challenge, so there you go. So I can't help it, I just gravitate towards, um, blue tribes almost all the time. I don't know what the deal is, alright? And trust me, there have been times it's bitten me in the, uh... But, when I first watched Cook Islands and HVV, for one, although why I supported the heroes just... that was so stupid. It's just blind fandom boyism. Yeah, high school me was really stupid when it came to, um, understanding this show, right? So Adam trying to make good with everyone? Well, he has to, okay? He's really been 
making things worse, not just with his own alliance, but with the people that they're um, opposed to. Sure, he didn't really do that much towards um, Natalie and Danny, but everyone else on his tribe, oh yeah, you bet. So of course he has to do damage control, then Rob decides to just do the lie that Adam is still causing trouble, but I don't think Jeremy would um, put it past Adam to do that, and even then... Ethan, if you read um, Dalton Ross's two interviews with him, and it's kind of odd that he's doing that when he, he's still in the game, Ethan is actually theorizing that Jeremy and Na I mean, uh, uh, Michelle, sorry, they actually want to use Rob as a shield to help them out. So it's not so much that they're working with Rob, it's that they talk to Rob and have Rob nonetheless help them. Uh, That'd be kind of interesting, because I do think that even though everyone always said that Jeremy was on the bottom, once they got rid of Natalie and they never really had a big discussion of what's the merit to keeping Jeremy over her, they never had that discussion, it was just split them up, and that was literally all that was said. No pros, no negatives, nothing. I'm like, is he really in as much danger as you think? Hmm... Want to see how he um, does this? Okay. Um, and uh, do I think the lie will work? It has really, really good potential to. It all depends on um, how well um, Blue does in the challenges, and if Adam shoots himself with the foot again. Because Rob and Pav, their gameplay is pretty obvious at this point. The question is, are people going to listen to them? That's really it. Then the Red Tribe, um, it comes... At first it's, um, Sandra vs. Tyson again, but then it changes to, uh, the people that have played multiple times, worrying about the one-timers who have fewer connections, uh, banding together. And while that works well for, um, Nick, who is the most recent winner and only learned that he won a few months um, before he was flown out there with a Yule who was removed from the Survivor community, according to most people. I agree, he didn't seem to be prominent there, but, um, mm hmm So it turns into um, that battle, and it's also really interesting to see how Tony and Sandra are actually talking really civilized here, because... No one has really talked about getting rid of Tony after the double first episode that we got. It's If any time it's been brought up, it's Tony going, Ooh, I gotta be careful so I'm not causing any trouble. Okay, that was the worst Tony impression, but you get what I mean. Um, that's really interesting. I thought for sure that there'd be some talk about that, because at least... Sandra, Tyson, Boston, Rob, and Parv have gotten the right amount of, ooh, we should be worried about them, and then Amber, because of her association, mm-hmm. But also, no one's talked about splitting up Tony and Sarah. I think it might have been mentioned one time, but just so briefly. Yeah. That's really interesting, uh, how that, um, hasn't come to fruition. Who knows, maybe you'll thought about it, but, um, so far that has yet to happen. And, um, I was totally expecting, um, uh, there to be some kind of a showdown between the two groups, but ultimately that didn't end up happening, which I'm a little disappointed by. I guess my giveaway should have been the fact that, um, while Tyson was saying, you know, let's get rid of Nick, um, um, <laughs> Nick just didn't have the right kind of desperation, if you ask me. I mean, like, he... Don't get me wrong, he was desperate, but that was just... In hindsight, though, I think there was something wrong with that amount. Especially since it was actually Tony and Sandra that were doing more of the... Big talking behind the scenes here, whereas Yule's Alliance wasn't featured that much. Yeah, that really should have clued me in, I guess. Hmm. But I got to uh, mention the challenge here real um, fast. I totally did not expect Blue to catch up, and really... I mean, like, I get that they weren't really thinking about 
the whole jumping up and grabbing those keys, but it wasn't until they were climbing up though that I realized, hey, wait a second. You put, granted, you do have the three weakest swimmers in the boat, but coincidentally, your weakest swimmers also happen to be your shortest people. Oh. <laughs> I mean, like, Denise, I could automatically go, oh, yeah, she's too short, but, um, the other two, I was really, um, shocked by kind of how bad they were, and Adam, just amazing how he was able to do that, because he had to have climbed up that thing more than the five times that we saw, like, there's no way it was just five times, he had to have done that at least a couple more, but, amazingly, he was able to pull that out, and not only, um, give his child the victory, but also potentially save himself. I don't think it would have been him, but he would have been on the short list easily. So congrats, um, Adam and Rob for um, pulling out that victory. And a lot of people are saying, well, Nick won that challenge this season. How is it that he wasn't, um, good here? Well, there's, um... I think two differences between um, when he won the challenge in his season versus now. Number one, in his season, it was in the individual stage. So there were far less people talking in the background and that kind of a thing. And then also, there's just the simple argument that it's a different day. His mind isn't as sharp. And also... When he won that challenge in his season, there was a decent chance he would have been, um, voted out. I ultimately don't think he would have, as long as Allison hadn't won, which she didn't, although I think she was the next, um, most, um, uh, most likely to win after him, but, hmm? Totally different adrenaline feeling. Adrenaline can work in favor and against you all the time. It happens. Like, I'm a runner, as I've said multiple times before, and there's times where I've gotten angry before a run, and sometimes I think it's actually helped me on the run, but the most recent time I got angry before a run, I couldn't finish it, though I made sure to um, uh, take a shorter break than I think I uh, usually do when that happens, right? So everything just aligned, and uh, Blue got the win, Red goes to our tribal council, and um, I was thinking that actually Nick was going to go for um, some reason. And when I saw him vote for Kim, though, I'm like, are you stupid? Did you potentially just set up a 4-4-1 vote? Well, it turns out he just um, got a misread on the situation. And everyone besides him ended up voting for um, Tyson. Uh, and Tyson himself and Vincent should have seen it coming. Well played, everyone. And him leaving the final token for Nick, that was actually a little um, surprising, because I thought he would have given it to someone on the um, other tribe. One, because everyone has been receiving final tokens on the other tribe, but also because I don't think that he had that much loyalty to people. Yeah, there was an original group with him and Kim, but Kim's just doing what she's told to do at um, this Points and he had to cut Amber early on, so he didn't really have anyone out there. But, turns out I was right. They, um, did target, um, Tyson before they targeted Rob, although... Did Rob get a vote in the first tribal? I think... He did. I could be wrong on that. Don't remember. But, hmm <laughs> So, I'm really enjoying where this season is heading, although I'm a little bit surprised that they didn't do a, um, swap here, but it could be that they're still gonna do the expansion bit, because there's, um, 15 players left. Yeah, they did, um, waste a day, but they don't actually have to do every other day eliminations, because 36, 37, and 38 eliminations, so you can technically kill three days, of which they've already killed one. Eh, we'll see.